Hello and welcome to my channel where today we have a lot of work ahead of us. I'm going to be doing my luxury eyeshadow palette collection. I've been talking about doing this video for a very long time and it's just a lot of work to do. That's why I haven't done it. But with the time that I have, I have pulled out all of my luxury eyeshadow palettes and today I'm going to be going through each one of them individually with you guys. I didn't know it got this bad. We have over a hundred palettes here. So I I just laid this out for the whole visual effect but I'm going to break all this down and organize these by brand and we will get into it so if you want to see a closer look at all of my luxury eyeshadow palettes then just keep watching so I'm trying to figure out how people film these so, my pile I have over here on the side, and I know this is like a wrinkled sheet. It's better than dirty carpet, so we're gonna go with it. So, we're gonna start off with Natasha Denona. If you hear noises in the background, I apologize. My family is running throughout the house. The first palette that we have, we're gonna start off with the big guys. So, we have the 28 Pan Purple Blue. I love this one. I definitely don't get as much use out of it as I wish I could, but these are what started off for Natasha Denona. I really love this one. I love this color story and it's one of her best formulas for sure. I also have the green brown 28 palette. This one I wanted less than the purple blue but I definitely use this one way more. It's really stunning. If you're into these cool tone kind of colors and then like greens, I think you will really like this. You even have some warmer shades over here. It's a really well balanced palette. I need to film a tutorial with both of these soon. You guys know I held off on the star palette for a a long time but I did end up picking it up really pretty I probably don't use it as much as I should but I got it kind of more so to complete my collection but it is really pretty we have the safari palette which I personally really love this isn't everybody's favorite but I find the mattes work very well for me this is an all matte palette really creamy really buttery some very different kind of mattes in here it's a fun palette to dig into and then it encourages you to use your lid toppers you know how your lid toppers sit in a drawer whenever I use this I actually dig into that lid topper drawer the Natasha Denona tropic palette this one was kind of a fail from her this whole row kind of sucked so she created a mini palette of a reformulated version I mean I really like this palette I like the top part it's very very creamy but I definitely see why these bottom formulas aren't worth the money so as a whole this palette wasn't worth the money but there was a lot of opportunities to get it on sale and at the end of the day I still use it and I still like it. We have the Biba palette, which this one is a neutral lover's dream. The formula is consistent across the board. If you're a neutral wearer, this is definitely one of her best ones. You guys know the gold palette is my favorite of her palettes. It's just the perfect mixture of neutrals but pops, different textures and consistencies. It's really a beautiful palette. Definitely my favorite in her line, though she has some that have come close now, but last year if you watched my channel when this palette released, it was all I talked about. We have the Lila palette. Now the Lila palette, I wish I loved more than I do. I just don't reach into this as much as I really should because you guys know I love purple tones, cool tones, mauve tones, and this palette completes all of that. So I'm gonna have to make a conscious effort to use this palette more. It is really stunning. So classic older one from Natasha. Then we have the Sunset palette, another one that kind of got Natasha off the ground. So you can see mine is quite used and abused and gross. I don't really care for warmer tones as much anymore, so this one doesn't get as much use for me, but spectacular formula. Really great palette if you can get this on sale definitely go for it. This is one of her newer palettes. This is the Metropolis palette and this is definitely one of my favorites because value wise it's just there. It's half the price of her palettes for half the pan size so you're not getting ripped off here and you have a great range of colors and there are a few shades that aren't as good in here but for the most part this is quite a beautiful palette with a great formula. This is what I recommend if you're starting off with Natasha Denona and you want one of her big palettes. This is the best value that you can get. Next we have the Sunrise palette. Now I really like this one. Again it's a little bit more warm than I go for but I definitely like this more than the Sunset palette. It's a better value as well and I think the colors are more easy for me personally to reach for so I do really enjoy it still but again a bit warm 
for my taste. Then we have the newest one to the family, the Love Palette. I really like this one. I think it's a really beautiful, very different color scheme for Natasha. It runs a little bit more red than I personally would love, but for the most part, this palette's really great. It inspires a lot of creativity in me, and I'm very happy that I purchased this one. So I have a few of her five pans, so I'm quickly going to run through them. So this is one of my first Natasha purchases ever that kind of got me on board with her. And this is the eyeshadow palette number five, so it's <laughs> really old packaging. All of these colors you can find in her palettes, but really pretty. I don't use it as much anymore now that I have such a huge collection, but still really like it. And then we have, this is the cream cranberry palette yes this one was one of her worst palettes if you ask me the quality is just not there for how much you're paying very pretty colors and you can get a pretty look it takes some work to get this one to work these two guys came out in a holiday collection a couple of years ago so this one is the aries palette these are one of her best releases most definitely this is one of her best collections and the joya palette both of these were spectacular. I know you guys still love these and still use these. They're stunning. This one took me a while to purchase, but this is the Camel palette and it's so popular for a reason. It just has every color you need. This is great for travel. If you're a neutral lover, you really will love this one. It's very nice. And then we have the Coral palette. Not gonna lie, kind of forgot I had this one. I did do a review on it and I did like it, but I guess it's just kind of fallen behind a lot of the others, but it is still very pretty. Here's my collection of of the baby mini ones. These are really good if you're looking to try her formula for a reduced price. So we have the mini gold one. I like this one because it's more of her unique mini palettes. Mini Glam is her newest one and it's one of my favorites because cool tone neutrals so I use this one a lot. We have Mini Star, which pairs nicely with the original Star palette. I don't grab for this one quite as much. It's easy to forget about, honestly, just because I like the Mini Glam a lot better, but it is still very pretty. Mini Nude is also really good quality. I like it as much as I like Mini Glam, but they both are kind of very similar. I kind of reach for one or the other. I wish they weren't so close, but this is another great one. Mini Sunset, I think, was the first of her minis, and the quality is just not there with this. I think she tried to cut corners a bit with this one as well as with the mini Leela. I think both of these, the quality wasn't good and she got complaints and then she improved all her previous ones. But yeah, these were the starter ones and they weren't great. So that's all of my Natasha Denona. All right, so we're gonna move on to another heavy hitter for you guys. I'm gonna talk about my Pat McGrath collection. Some of them have their boxes, some of them don't, kind of depending on how I'm storing them. Here is... The Decadence palette, and this one is beautiful, but I have to say of all of the ones that she has in her collection, this one isn't my favorite. I know a lot of you fought to pick this one up and it's great and you have great colors, but it's not my favorite. Of course, we have Divine Rose. I know a lot of you love this one. Divine Rose, I really enjoy. It's really a great wearable palette. I wear it a lot for just every day, but it's not the most inspiring palette for me, but I know a lot of you like it because it's probably the most wearable of her palette. We have bronze seduction here and this one I think is probably my favorite I just love the colors in here they speak to me they inspire me and ah, you get so much dimension from this palette so if I were to recommend one Pat McGrath palette for you that I just love the most I have to give it to bronze seduction I just think it is everything so beautiful midnight sun is a close second though I love this one a lot at first, it didn't inspire me like the others. The longer I've had it, the more I really love it. So this one is giving Bronze Seduction a run for its money, I just think. It has some of the most beautiful colors. I love this purple right here. It's such a unique shade. Oh, one of my favorites. You guys know I covet my Pat McGrath palettes. They are the best in the business. We have Mothership One Subliminal. This is the OG palette. And this one, surprisingly, I wear a lot. It's just an everyday neutral cool toned palette. And I think a lot of times when we think of cool toned palettes, this one doesn't get talked about a lot. But if you really like cool toned palettes, you'll really enjoy this. It's such a wearable everyday palette. So we have Mothership Two Sublime. This green is everything and so is this pink. These two are why I love this palette so much and it's kind of boring to me to first look at but every single look I've created with this palette I'm obsessed with. Final big boy that we have is Mothership Three Subversive and I 
think of the original three, this one is my favorite. I love Mothership 1 because of how wearable it is, but this palette is just so fun. The pops of colors that you have on your lid are so unique. Now taking a look at this one, this one I think is my favorite of the original three Mothership palettes. So let's start into her Baby Mothership palettes. So this one is Bronze Ambition, and this is a great everyday neutral kind of palette. So many of you guys love this one, and for good reason. Really great everyday colors. A great starter palette for Pat McGrath, especially if you aren't into her really artistic colors. This is great for everybody. Mothership Subliminal is more cool-toned everyday colors. Part of her... Hi. Part of her original three kind of neutral baby palettes. This one also really stunning. These original baby motherships are also really classic. And then this is the last of the original. This is La Vie and Rose. And this one is not neutral, obviously. It's more pinks and purples. You know I love it, but I don't use it as often as I should. But I will never get rid of it because it's pink and purple and those are my favorite eyeshadow colors. So love this one. It holds a special place in my heart. We're gonna pull out the baby motherships from last year's haul holiday collection. So this is the Dark Star one right here. This one is really pretty. As you can see, we've broken this shadow, but it is really pretty if you like smoky eyes. I like this one a lot. Then we have the Subversive Metamorphosis. I don't really care for this one. It has really pretty shimmery colors that are, of course, great quality, but just compared to the rest of her line, I don't think there's as much special about this one. And then this one was the least favorite of the three for me. This is the Sublime Lime Bronze Temptation. Found the quality to fall flat on this one. The shum of the shades, they just weren't that good. This color right here was just weird. So yeah, I don't know. This one doesn't inspire me and it's not my favorite quality of hers. We have some Star Wars. These ones might be like my favorite baby ones. This is the Dark Galaxy and I much prefer the packaging of these. It's just easier. This one I think is my favorite of the two. This might be my favorite baby mothership ever and it's so sad because these were so limited in quantity so not many of you guys got your hands on this but this one is so stunning I'm not even a Star Wars fan but man I am obsessed with this palette it's beautiful this is the galactic gold and I don't like it as much as the other one, but it still is just as stunning. Again, this is my, my favorite collection from Pat McGrath. I think she did a really fantastic job with these. This is her newest baby mothership to have come out. This is Golden Opulence, and I liked this one. If you see my review on it, I don't think it's anything super special to her line. It's good quality, good colors, and every time I use it, I do thoroughly enjoy it, but it's not the first one I'm always gonna grab for. It was for Lunar New Year, so I think that's why I like it, but yeah really cute here's a collection of her blitz astral quads so this one don't have the box for this one right now so I don't remember the names of these Wow I'm horrible but we have this one right here we have this one which is like more of the pink colors I like this one a lot this one is nocturnal Nirvana this is the only one for display purposes that I kept its box I have the others boxes but I just they aren't in them right now for storage purposes. Ooh, this one is so pretty. This one is my favorite, and it's this one. And that's just because for Pat McGrath, I make exceptions, and I prefer the colors over the neutrals. So pretty. I love these. These are all like her glittery, very pretty, unique formula to her brand. So I love all of these quads. I think they're stunning. Lastly, we have this little cheap six pan guy. Just really great colors. I mean, these aren't the Pat McGrath experience, but she did release this so you could try her formula for an affordable price. And so I do have this in my collection. I haven't reached for it very often because obviously it's not that exciting, but I do have this and it is really good formula. So that's all I have for Pat McGrath. Let's move on to Tom Ford. All right, so next we're gonna move on to Tom Ford. Now I do have a Tom Ford rankings video coming within the next couple of weeks. So I'm not gonna talk too much about the palettes. You're just gonna have to wait for that video to hear my thoughts. So I'm just gonna kind of run through them quickly. It'll also save me some time. We have Seductive Rose, Last Dance, which you guys seem to love this quad when I wore it. Soleil Elune, which is one of 
of his newer quads, Soleil Diver, Soleil Neige, which if you saw my review on this, you would know I love this way more than I thought I would. Starry Night, this is the one I wore in one of my more recent videos. Virgin Orchid, Titanium Smoke, the classic nude dip, this is one of his most popular quads. Badass, Golden Minx, Daydream, which, oof, this one, amazing. Double Indemnity, Body Heat, Silvered Topaz, Honeymoon, Suspicion, oh my gosh, this is so pretty to look at. I haven't opened this one in a while. African Violet, Coco Mirage, which I learned from you guys, has been discontinued and I am highly upset because this is a great little matte quad with such good matte shadows that blend themselves. And lastly, we have Pretty Baby, which great kind of neutral purple tones. So that's all I have for Tom Ford. Make sure you stay tuned for my rankings video. And we're gonna move on to Charlotte Tilbury next. So I have slowly begun collecting Charlotte Tilbury and my collection has grown much larger than I thought it was. So I also do plan on doing a rankings video down the line. So I'm not gonna talk too, too much about the palettes themselves. I do wanna show you them. We have the eye Icon palette. This one I love way more than I thought I would. The colors are just so good in here. Starry Eyes to Hypnotize. I feel like this palette is one of the few that have a lot of variety in them from Charlotte, but really stunning. Been grabbing for this one a lot. Stars in Your Eyes. I just feel like this is a giant palette of Charlotte Tilbury colors. This is her tone. Really pretty though. I love these tones. And then her newest baby, the Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. I've been loving this, though you can't create a ton of looks with it, but good thing I like the colors in here. So we're gonna start going into her quads that I'm working to build the whole collection. So this first one that we have is Classic Pillow Talk. This is what made her brand. Everybody loves this quad. Uptown Girl, I feel like this is a slept on quad from her. This one's really pretty if you like cool tones. We have Supersonic Girl, which is one of her first all palette of pops. So meaning all four of these shades are her pop formula, which is like a glitter lid topper formula. I have Dreamgasm here, which this is one of my first Charlotte Tilbury quads. So it started my addiction, so pretty. These are one of her new ones that just released. So I just filmed a whole video on this, but this is Mesmerizing Maroon. Another new one, Green Lights. This also used to be called The Rebel. So that's this one right here. I love this one way more than I thought I would. So this one is the Pillow Talk version of the Palettes of Pops. So, that's my boyfriend right there. So this is all of her pop formula, but inspired from the Pillow Talk color story. The Glamour Muse. This one I bought the last VIB sale so I could slowly build my collection. I actually haven't used this yet. Isn't that crazy? But it's purple toned. But it's very excited for that one. Then we have the Golden Goddess. This one is a great everyday wearable one, especially if you enjoy cool tones. Love this one. This is also a really popular one of hers. Exaggerized. This kind of looks the same as the one I just showed you. A uh, classic for Charlotte Tilbury, but very universally flattering one. We have Copper Charge. This is another one of the super new ones that just released. This one's very wearable and warm. This is the last of Charlotte Tilbury that I have to show you today, but this is super blue. And this is also one of the four new ones that just came out that I purchased all of. And this one is so pretty. This is the only time we've really seen blues from her. So now we're gonna move on to Viseart. So I do have a rankings video of my Viseart palettes if you are curious, but man has my collection grown. Now I do have the Paris nudes in my makeup kit right now. I didn't feel like grabbing for it, but I also have that one. So the first one that I have here is the Grande Pro 1. This is actually my mom's. I stole it from her because I also have this one in my makeup kit and it's disgusting and used and gross looking. So I wanted to show a fresh one, but this is probably my most used busy art palette. It has every single color that you need and especially for makeup artists, highly recommend this one. Busy art across the board has great palettes for makeup artists. We have the Grand Pro Volume 2, which is all shimmer and metallics and so many different fun finishes. 
Definitely don't dig into this one as much as I should, but if you are a creative person, I think you will love this palette. And then the newest one of their Grand palettes, and this is volume three, obviously all very bright colors of the color wheel. I think this one goes very well with volume two. So if you like colors, definitely go for this one. This has all you need. They're very pigmented shadows, pretty easy to work with, just really great quality. You don't find palettes like that everywhere. We have Cool Mattes too, really great blue tones, gray tones, and purple tones in here. I don't dig into this too much, but it is a very resourceful palette to have when you do need these types of shades. Sultry Muse is definitely one of those that I recommend to beginners to Fizzy Art if you're looking into the 12 pans. This one just has a really great variety of shades. This is an all shimmer palette, but it is still stunning. I love this one. So I think if you're new to Fizzy Art, this is a great one to pick up. This one as well is a great first time Fizzy Art one to pick up. Neutral mattes because it has every color that you need as far as mattes goes. And these two together are a match made in heaven. And this is definitely one of the best matte formulas in the business so that's why this is so great even though it's boring one of the best formulas you will find the koi palette is one of my favorite spring eyeshadow palettes I just think of watercolors with this palette you can do so much with it you can use it wet you can use it dry you can build these you can layer these this is one of the most versatile palettes and the most underloved in my opinion because it's so good like people really don't see the potential that this palette has I truly love it I also have the Alcone and Busy Art collaboration palette now this one contains colors that I already own. These are all pre-existing shades made into a palette, but I just love the curation of this. I love how these are put together to create a look. You can do like, like a quad and it makes sense. You can do it just as two colors and it makes sense. It just makes creating a look with this very easy and I wanted to support the collaboration so I did pick this up. I haven't used it a lot, but I really like it. Editorial Brights is great for the touch of bright colors in your collection. So if you don't have a lot of bright colors and you're looking for a palette that's great quality just to have these just in case. I always think Editorial Brights is a great one to go for. I love this matte white here and you can mix these colors. You can do a lot with these. So this is just kind of an emergency palette if you do need a quick touch of color. This is the way to go. Neutral Mattes Milieu is another great way to go if you're looking for an all matte neutral palette. This one is much more warm and then you have some fun kind of berry pops in here and a navy pop. I really enjoy this one a lot. It gets a lot of use from me as well and it is a different touch than the neutral ones so if you like these colors more definitely go for this one it still is that great matte formula we also have the warm mattes here and actually i feel like milieu is a little bit more warm than the actual warm one but i like how this isn't overly warm because i'm not a huge warm eyeshadow fan but you actually have these which are relatively neutral and then you can really warm it up with these colors out here this is still a really great basic matte palette to have bridal satin has great satin shades in here that you can just pop onto the lid. I'm very surprised at how much I actually enjoy this, just the way that these show up on the lid. It's a beautiful satin formula, so they're very pigmented, but they aren't too crazy glittery, so if you just want that little bit of glow in photography, this is the way to go. This palette right here was gifted to me from Muse Beauty Pro when they started selling individual Vizzy Art shadows, so I have most of these in my other palettes, but I did want to show you that this was cute curated from Celeste. Hi Celeste, love these. From their nine pan palettes, I only have two. I have Libertine right here, which I actually have, I like quite a lot. I think it's an interesting take on a color story and you get a lot of variety in here. But this one is my favorite. This is Liaison. Oh, oh my gosh, the quality in here is incredible. One of my absolute most favorite purple palettes ever. Amazing quality. They blend beautifully. They're so pigmented. If you love purple shadows, you are missing out if you don't have the Liaison palette. I only have one of these types of palettes, but this is the Theory palette, the Minx. This was a palette that introduced me to Vizzy Art. These shadows are so extremely pigmented and they do the work for you. If you were to start off with one Vizzy Art palette and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you're looking for quality and something that's going to last a long time as far as quantity, 
This is a really beautiful palette, a great starter palette to introduce you to the true formula of Viseart. We're gonna get into the edit palettes. So these have a smaller pan size, but you get more colors. So these are a great value. This is probably my favorite. This is the Paris edit. This is their newest edit palette as well. And if you like these mauve neutral cool tones, this is the way to go. This is one of the prettiest. I would also fight you at that dark edit is the best one as well. Dark edit though, it's just not as wearable colors for me, but the quality in here is incredible and it is a very unique palette. There aren't a lot of palettes with this type of color story. The shimmers in here are exceptional. They're better than a lot of the other Viseart shimmer formulas, honestly. This is a really great one as well. These are definitely my two favorites of the edits, but you also have options. We have the warm edit. If you're looking for a warm palette, this is a great way to go. And then lastly, you have rosé at it which has more pinky tones but you also can make this palette very neutral i do like this one as well oh my gosh i like them all though so <laughs> to finish off viseart we're going to talk about the petite pro palettes which as you can tell from the color they're already so exciting so this one right here is the apricotine palette which a lot of you guys really liked because you get beautiful peachy bronze colors for the summer this is a great summer palette and it's only 30 dollars for this formula absolutely incredible this one soleil is a great inspiring palette and you're only getting eight shades in here and i do feel like there's so many different looks that you can create with this palette so that's what i think makes this palette unique is how creative you can get even though you're given such limited shades beautiful for a sunset eye and then this is the newest one that i just reviewed and this is the shushu palette and really fun again a different vibe for the summer but it is a really great summer palette as well really bright fun punch pops of color really enjoy this so that's all i have for busy art the next pile that i have i'm just gonna bring in some random luxury palettes that i have that i don't have a huge collection of all right so on to the home stretch we're gonna start off with the singular by terry palette that i own i bought this on vacation a couple of years ago this is the game lighter palette in pixie nude honestly not even sure if they sell this and i've been meaning to declutter it because honestly i don't use it but it's the only eyeshadow that i own from by terry so that's that's why I want to keep it but they're very soft I'm not super impressed by this palette other than the aesthetic of it <laughs> but it's the only by Terry palette that I own so I can't seem to get rid of it I wasn't sure if Laura Mercier was luxury but I'm just gonna count it so these are from the new holiday collection so this is the fine art eyeshadow palette honestly not as impressed as I was hoping to be by this palette looks stunning but these shadows kind of don't give off very much. The finish is pretty, but I just don't think it's worth the money. Same thing goes for this full canvas eye and cheek essential palette. I just think it's dumb that this mirror comes off. It's not attached to anything, but here's the eyeshadow side. There is a blush side, but I don't want to mess with that right now. And again, these are like the same colors in the eyeshadow palette that I just showed you. And they are pretty, but it just, they don't give me much. They're not worth the money. From Bobbi Brown. I've decluttered a lot, but I've kept three token palettes. So this is the In A Flash eyeshadow palette. Really fun colors and neutral lovers dream, especially as far as cool tones go and you have these really fun colors. I haven't used this one too much, I have to admit, but <laughs> I really like this palette. It's very plain, but it's very pretty. Also in that collection, this is from the holiday collection, this is the Smoke and Meadows. And you guys know I'm on a huge cool tone kick so this is a great travel cool toned eyeshadow palette really stunning this is the one from last year this is the ultraviolet palette and i really like this i feel like this palette was underrated it's it looks boring i suppose that's why but the looks you can get from this are so pretty and i remember wearing this in a video and you guys were like you need to do a tutorial this palette is beautiful and i didn't get around to doing a tutorial but it is a really stunning palette i have a handful of some dior palettes so i have a couple from the backstage collection i believe they have four but i only have two so this first one is the Custom Eye Palette. Now this one is a little bit more up my alley. Neutral kind of tones here. Really pretty. This isn't super impressive if I'm being honest. But I just like the aesthetic of it. I'm sorry. This is called Universal Neutrals. And then this one is Amber Neutrals. Which... If you like more warmer tones, this one's really pretty. I did like this one a lot when I reviewed it. And it still is really nice. But these aren't very unique, you know? Aren't special, but... 
they are very pretty great versatile everyday kind of colors have a couple of dior quints here so they're from the holiday collections that i've been purchasing so this is happy 2020 and these ones are the neutrals and tell me this isn't gorgeous probably not worth the money but they're gorgeous i don't regret purchasing this one. Oh, this is celebrate in gold do i even collect these i don't know and this one is from the spring collection that just came out this is pink vibration i like these but if you saw my video on these i didn't think they were really worth the money i don't know that i'm going to continue to purchase dior quince just because they're so much better out there if i'm being honest this is party in colors this one is super fun i like this one a lot i like the two like kind of new year's collection better than this new spring collection and then this is another one from the spring collection this is blue beat and this one again i just don't think it's worth it these i found to be a little bit chalky to be honest like not that good but great for spring though i will give them that so they're pretty but i'm not as impressed by dior last three items so i do have one little item from chanel i don't have a very big chanel collection but this is the lace beiges and a lot of you love this and so do i i am afraid to use this because it's so expensive and i just really like it a lot i think the colors work great the colors are very universally flattering and there's a reason why this is so universally loved because it's just good so chanel did not disappoint me with this one but their eyeshadows in general don't scream out to me but this one is a good one and then the last two items are scott barnes which i've talked about a lot on my channel so this one here is the color bomb palette i just love the finishes here obviously this isn't for everybody it's very very colorful but i think he has a really nice buildable formula and if you don't like color you have the snatural palette which again you get great textures in here this is very easy for beginners because it is such a beautiful buildable palette the colors blend very easily and you get a lot of dimension within the textures of this palette so i think he did a really lovely job with these and i wasn't sure if these were luxury but i'm counting them as luxury i mean there we have it that was my luxury eyeshadow palette collection you guys have been requesting it for a while so that's all i have obviously i'm not like bragging or anything i'm just showing you <laughs> so that's all i have for today's video thank you guys so much for watching if you aren't subscribed to my channel make sure you take the time to do so and i will see you guys in my next video bye have a good one